Namaste, New York, UN. How are we doing today? Okay, we like that, yes. So welcome to the 8th International Day of Yoga. We are all here today because of you. It was at the 69th session of the United Nations General Assembly that the resolution establishing June 21st each year as the International Day of Yoga was adopted unanimously with 177 countries co-sponsoring it. Co-sponsors of the proposal included nearly all members from the African continent, Latin America, Europe, most of Asia, the Caribbean community, and the small island developing states, including the Pacific island states. I hope we have people from all of these places today. Yeah, a shout out would be good, thank you. The sheer diversity of cross-regional support that this initiative garnered from across the world in a record time with record numbers is inspiring. So thank you for continuing to support us with your enthusiastic participation over the years. Now let us take a quick recap of the Yoga Day celebrations at the UN since its adoption. योग केवल व्यायाम भर न होकर अपने आप से तथा विश्व व प्रकृति के साथ तादादमय को प्राप्त करने का माध्यम है एक अंतरराष्ट्रीय योग दिवस को आरंभ करने की दिशा में कार्य करें I now invite the permanent representative of India, Ambassador T.S. Thirumurthy, to deliver the welcome remarks. President of the General Assembly, His Excellency Abdullah Shahid, 
permanent representatives and colleagues from permanent missions and the UN Secretariat, yoga enthusiasts and friends. I'm truly grateful to the President of the General Assembly for gracing this occasion in the midst of his numerous commitments. I'm also grateful to all the colleagues and yoga, and yoga enthusiasts assembled here today. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the eighth International Day of Yoga celebrations at the UN. We are returning to in-person celebrations after a gap of two years, during which the pandemic had upended the lives of people around the world. During these difficult times, millions embraced yoga as their companion to stay healthy, overcome depression, and mental anxiety. In recognition of this important role of yoga, the theme for this year's celebration is Yoga for Humanity. Yoga can also be an integral part of our Build Back Better strategy. The, yes, the essence of yoga is balance, not just balance within the body or that between the mind and the body, but also balance in the human relationship with planet Earth. It is in this context that Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, had launched a global life movement, lifestyle for environment, life where people all over the world can contribute to the health of planet Earth by adopting a sustainable lifestyle. Yoga can contribute in creating a community of individuals who embrace simplicity and make conscious, sustainable lifestyle choices. As we celebrate the eighth International Day of Yoga, our objective this year has been to introduce the various facets of yoga to you. The yoga session, which will be led by very experienced gurus and masters, will be a good introduction to yoga. Before I conclude, let me also thank State Bank of India, our main sponsor, and other sponsors. I invite everyone to actively participate in the sessions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It is my honor now to welcome President of the General Assembly, his Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Shaheed, to inaugurate the International Yoga Day 2022. His Excellency Trimurti, Permanent Representative of India, Permanent Representatives, Distinguished Colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, namaste. Today, I'm delighted to celebrate the International Day of Yoga with you all under the theme, Yoga for Humanity. Thank you, India, for hosting this very special event. Today could not have come at a more opportune time as the COVID-19 pandemic has upended lives and livelihoods triggering a deluge of anxiety and depression. The practice of yoga serves as a holistic approach to the physical, mental, and spiritual health and well-being of humanity. It simply works. Both an ancient practice and philosophy that dates back over 5,000 years ago, yoga continues to grow in popularity all over the world. It plays a major role in bringing people together with compassion, kindness, and humility. It builds resilience among people, fostering a sense of unity and purpose. My dear friends, yoga is the ultimate energizer, as it can be practiced anywhere, at any time, and requires no financial investment. It is a powerful way for people of all ages and status regardless of color, ethnicity, or gender, to improve overall physical and mental health and healing. Indeed, improving global health is our long-term objective. Today's celebration, therefore, is also an opportunity to promote more sustainable lifestyles and a healthier outlook on life. Practicing yoga also helps us achieve the SDGs, particularly goal three on good health and well-being. 
My dear friends, yoga is all about unity, connecting the mind, body, and spirit. On this International Day of Yoga, let us continue to nurture our happy minds. Let us commit to more physical activities. And yes, let us practice yoga to soothe our tired, weary spirits. The power of yoga is the power of unity for a healthier, happier, and prosperous future for all. It is here to stay, and I thank you. I thank President of the General Assembly for his valuable message. It is a pleasure now to invite the permanent representative of Bhutan, Ambassador Doma Shering, herself a yoga practitioner and enthusiast. We look forward to hearing from you, Your Excellency. Mr. President, Excellencies, dear friends, good evening and namaskar. First, allow me to extend warmest congratulations to the permanent mission of India and to all friends present this evening on the occasion of the eighth International Day of Yoga. I thank the permanent representative of India, His Excellency Ambassador T.S. Tirumurthy, for the opportunity to share a few thoughts on this year's theme, Yoga for Humanity. Yoga is described as a tradition that seeks to unify the mind with the body and soul to allow for greater mental, spiritual, and physical well-being. The practice of yoga is well known and loved in Bhutan for its multifaceted health benefits and for the values it inculcates amongst practitioners. Mindfulness, moderation, discipline, and perseverance are all values with universal appeal that encourage a deeper sense of interconnectedness within community, society, and the natural world around us. As a pathway towards sustainable living, it is in complete consonance with the ethos of Bhutan's development philosophy of gross national happiness that too seeks to achieve harmonious balance balance between material well-being on one hand and the spiritual, emotional, and cultural needs of society on the other. Yoga responds to this aspiration for harmony. And we too in Bhutan believe that yoga evokes greater happiness for the individual, the community, and consequently for our planet. The inextricable link between good mental health physical well-being and sustainable development was brought into sharp focus during the pandemic. And at no other time was there a greater need for the physical and mental nourishment that yoga offers. In the face of depression, anxiety, loneliness, brought about by extended periods of lockdown and isolation, the practice of yoga offered a lifeline to better physical health and mental well-being for millions across the world. The WHO's World Mental Health Report, released in the past week, states that nearly one billion people worldwide suffer from some form of mental disorder, including one in seven teenagers. Against such sombering findings, the need for good practices and holistic solutions for health and well-being accessible to all become even more compelling. In 2014, Bhutan was pleased to join 176 other UN member states in supporting Resolution 69131, steered by India, proclaiming the 21st of June each year as International Day of Yoga. Yoga may have had its roots in the rich and ancient traditions of India, but today, as our presence this evening testifies, it has transcended borders and is truly India's gift to humanity. Happy International Day of Yoga. Thank you, Excellency, for sharing your views with us. And now, 
invite PGA and our other guests to join you all before we start the lecture demonstrations. Yoga indeed is not just about exercise, but to discover the sense of oneness with yourself, the world and nature, as we have all heard today. Yoga embodies unity of mind and body, thought and action, restraint and fulfillment, harmony between man and nature, and a holistic approach to health and well-being. This is even more important in the COVID context as we've heard from our speakers today, which has underscored the need to address the mental health dimension of the pandemic, in addition to the physical health aspects. Yoga provides us with a set of guidelines and a toolkit to help deal with oneself and with the world. That is why today we have a series of guided demonstrations that relate to various facets of yoga. In today's session, Yoga with Masters, we will start off with a yoga dance, move on to a pranayama breathing by Isha Yoga, followed by a series of yoga asanas by Bhakti Center, and conclude with a meditation workshop by Integral Yoga Institute. Now, before we start with the events for today that I'm so glad to see all of you uh, be present here today for, uh, I would like to remind that we do have a digital exhibition coming up on yoga starting tomorrow through 1st of July. This will, uh, there will also be a reception for yoga, the details of which I shall be giving out later today. So, I hope that we can all get to see you there. So first up, we have the Indian Raga, one of the world's largest digital platforms for Indian performing arts. They have been working on making India's rich cultural traditions more accessible to all. Indian Raga, as some of you may recall, has been part of previous Yoga Day celebrations here at the UN. And it is my pleasure to invite them again on stage. I hand the floor to its CEO and founder, Sri Ram Emani, who will give us a brief introduction of the yoga dance that they are performing today. Over to you. Thank you, Sneha. Welcome, everyone. It's great to be back here uh, on behalf of the Indian Raga team to present yet another unique creative piece choreographed just for you guys today that brings together yoga movement um, along with movement from Indian classical dance styles. And the focus for uh, today is going to be the harmony between mind and body, which has been referenced almost in every opening remark that you just heard. Uh, what we're going to do is to start off with a piece called Journey Home. Um, and you can interpret home however you want. It's an original Indian Raga composition by Samhit Aradhula, choreographed today by Swati Jayashankar. And what you're going to see in that is going to be yoga postures along with representation of the five elements in nature. There, we've used a lot of poses from yoga that you might have seen and also have done. So you should absolutely feel free to just get up on your feet and try to follow them. And maybe if not fully follow them, then just get in one or two postures and get that done as a warm up. So feel absolutely free to do that. And then after that, we're going to move into a piece called Shiva Shambho, uh, which is original music by Parshunath Upadhyay, choreographed by Swati Jayashankar, Sophia Salingeros, and Isha Parupudi. This piece represents what we call karanas in Indian dance, which are yogic poses set to rhythm. And these are going to demonstrate and depict attributes of Lord Shiva, who is considered the god of yogic practice. Uh, presenting these dances today are Indian Raga fellows Swati Jayashankar, Sophia Salingeros, and Netra Ishwaran, 
We're delighted to be back here again. Please feel free to join them and hope you enjoy.
thank you for that scintillating performance. Let us hear it for Indian Raga again. I could see some of our younger members on the corner trying to warm up, but uh, we are not quite there yet. So the next uh, demonstration is by Isha Yoga. Isha Foundation, uh, as I'm sure many of you are already aware, is a non-profit, volunteer-run public service organization. Their powerful yoga programs for inner transformation and inspiring projects are appreciated worldwide and is reflected in Isha's consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Sam Chase, Hatha Yoga teacher from Isha Foundation, has held yoga and meditation workshops across the US and India and is with us today to take us through pranayama practice. I invite all of you to please join in. We'll start with an invocation. Those of you wearing glasses, you can keep them aside. You can hold Brahma Mudra. Place your right hand over your left hand, loosely placed in the middle of your lap, palms facing upward, and close your eyes. Asatum Satkamaya Tamasum Jyote Gamaya Mrityur Amritangamaya Aum Shanti 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 Namaskaram everyone, how are you all doing today? Yeah, I can hear some of you, but not the rest of you. I'm here on behalf of Isha Foundation, a nonprofit, volunteer run public service organization founded by Sadhguru in 1992 to address all aspects of human well being. Many of you may know that Sadhguru has been riding his motorcycle across 27 nations for 100 days to raise awareness about the importance of caring for our soil. His message about global soil degradation has reached over 2 billion people and received the support of 74 nations to date. But what does soil have to do with yoga? The word yoga means union. It means that in one's experience, what is the existence and what is you is not different. See, if you just sit here for a second and breathe, half of your lungs are hanging out here on the trees. Without the trees, the grass, and the other plants, and the soil from which they spring, there is no oxygen, no breath, no life. Sadhguru says that the most fundamental yogic process is known as Bhuta Shuddhi. This means to cleanse the five elements. See, we have a theme going here. Essentially, whatever yoga you practice, whether it is asana, pranayam, or meditation, 
all of it comes from the fundamentals of Bhuta Shuddhi. So to get in touch with the elements of this planet is essential. Let's do a little experiment together, shall we? What I want you to do is with all your five fingers together, palms facing downward, and don't do it just yet, just first listen to the instructions. Soon I will ask you to close your eyes and take some deep breaths. Deep inhalations and deep exhalations. Then when I say switch, you turn your hands over so that the palms are facing upward. Now when you do this, there will be a difference between the two positions of where the lungs are filling the most. The maximum expansion and contraction will happen in a different place between the two positions. So I want you to notice this. So we'll try this experiment now. So you just close your eyes, keep your palms facing downward, all the five fingers together, loosely placed on your thigh, and now take some deep breaths, deep inhalation and exhalation. And now switch, palms facing upward. Switch again, palms downward. And you can slowly open your eyes. Are you able to notice a difference? Those of you who are able to notice a difference, please raise your hands. So I see some people very confidently some little bit wilted flower, some not there at all. So if you have the necessary awareness for this, what you will notice is that when the palms are facing downward, the maximum expansion and contraction is coming from the diaphragm region. But when you flip the palms and they're facing upward, it happens a little higher in the chest area. I see some of you are uh, nodding in agreement. So for those of you who are not able to notice, let's try this one more time. You place your palms facing downward, all the fingers together. And don't breathe in any particular way. Just take some deep breaths. Close your eyes. Take some deep breaths. And now switch, palms facing upward. And you can open your eyes. Noticeable? So if you're still not able to notice, you can try this out at home. But I want you to understand what this means. Just flipping your hand over is changing the way you breathe. Not just the way you breathe. The way your entire energy system functions is changing. So now, during the course of the day, when you're talking to someone, all types of things we're doing, you know? You may be sending your energies into a turmoil, and then you're expecting to be peaceful. Such things don't happen in this world. The converse is also true. Just by sitting and breathing in a particular way, you can change the way you are within yourself. So now, we'll be learning a pranayam known as Nadi Shuddhi. But what is a pranayam? Prana means the very life energy within us. And yama means to control. So to control the prana is pranayam. Nadi shuddhi literally means cleansing the nadis. In yoga they say, as there is a physical body, there is an energy body which consists of 72,000 nadis. A nadi is a channel or a pathway in which the energy moves. Now, if you cut open the body, you will not find the nadis. They are not nerves. It is simply the way the energy moves through the system. Now, when we say nadi shuddhi, we are not referring to the 72,000, because these 72,000 are only a branch out of the two basic nadis, 36,000 branching out from Pingala and 36,000 branching out from Ida. This is the energy physiology of a human being. When we say Nadi Shuddhi, we are talking about cleansing fundamentally the Pingala and the Ida so that the energy system works in balance. 
there is a connection between your breath and your mental structure. So to bring balance to your thought is a very important step that you must take if you want to bring balance to your actions, to your emotions, and to the results of your life, and to the impact that you have on other people's lives. Nadi Shuddhi plays an important role. So how to do Nadi Shuddhi? Please observe the demonstration. You can relax. So how you do this is, you use only your right hand. Don't do it just yet. First just listen and observe, and then we'll do it together. You use only your right hand. Left hand is loosely placed in the middle of your lap, palm facing upward. You use the thumb and ring finger. Fold the middle and index finger. The ring and little finger should be straight and side by side touching. Holding it this way, locate the septal bone on the right nostril, just a millimeter beneath this, if you place the inside of the thumb. With very minimal pressure, you can block the nostril effectively such that no air can escape. Then, inhale through the left nostril. Once the insulation is complete, exhale through the same. In a similar fashion, block the nef left nostril Inhale through the right nostril. Once the ex inhalation is complete, exhale through the same. Again, switch. Block the right nostril with the thumb. Inhale through the left and exhale. And you'll continue like this. The most important thing when doing this pranayam is that the breathing should be fully in and fully out. It is a complete inhalation and a complete exhalation, but very, very slowly and gently. You should do it as slowly and gently as it is possible for you. You should not make a sound when you're doing the inhalation and exhalation. Just relax and let the breath settle down by itself. Now, once you close your eyes and start doing it, right nostril, left nostril, right nostril, left nostril, after some time, you don't know which is right and which is left. So for this, you just remember one basic point and the Nadi Shuddhi will happen on its own. You switch after each exhalation. So whichever nostril you inhale with, you exhale through the same, and then switch. The ideal Nadi Shuddhi should be done so gently, such that if we were to place a feather beneath your nostrils, the hair on the feather would not even move during exhalation. That's how slowly and gently the breath should be. Now, if you're not able to do it that slowly and gently, it's fine. You do it the best you can. Nadi Shuddhi should be done for a minimum of four minutes. So we'll try this now. Those of you wearing glasses, please keep them aside. Sit in a cross-legged posture with your spine comfortably erect. Close your eyes. And do Nadi Shuddhi until I tell you to stop. Do it slowly and gently. The breathing should be fully in and fully out. Be focused on your breath.
can relax and slowly open your eyes. We'll look at a few common corrections. Please observe the demonstration. Do not keep the left hand on the thigh. The left hand should be loosely placed in the middle of your lap, palm facing upward. To clarify the hand position, you use the thumb and ring finger. Fold the middle and index fingers. The ring and little finger should be straight and side by side touching. If you're not able to keep them straight, you straighten them the best you can. There is a tendency to lean forward and slouch. The spine should be comfortably erect. Also, do not keep the head down or to the side. Unconsciously, the face may tilt one direction or another. The head should be straight. Do not press down hard on the lower part of the nostril. Locate the septal bone on the right nostril, just a millimeter beneath this. If you place the inside of the thumb, you can block the nostril effectively so that no air will escape. Do not keep the right arm away from the body. The arm should be centered and close to the body. There is a tendency to keep the right shoulder tense and raised. The shoulder and arm should be loose and relaxed. Now when you're doing the breathing, it should not be shallow breathing, normal breathing, and you should not hold your breath. The breathing should be fully in and fully out. So incorporating some of these corrections, let's try this again. Those of you wearing glasses, please keep them aside. Sit with your spine comfortably erect. And do Nadi Shuddhi until I tell you to stop. The breathing is fully in and fully out. Keep the spine comfortably erect. Keep the head straight. Relax and be focused on your breath. The breathing is fully in and fully out. Keep the eyes closed. Be focused on your breath. Be focused on your breath. Breathing is fully in and fully out. Keep the head straight. Spine comfortably erect.
focused on your breath. And you can relax and slowly open your eyes. So this is a very simple but powerful process. Even just 10 minutes a day can make a profound impact in one's life. From my personal experience, I can tell you that anytime I'm feeling unbalanced or the mind is racing too much, or I have to give a presentation, or perhaps I have to speak at the UN, I use this practice to balance myself. It's an incredible thing how in just a few minutes, you can go from a place of feeling very unsettled with yourself to completely calm and relaxed. So I hope that you make use of this practice. If you want to review the practice, take the next step in your spiritual journey, or learn more about the Safe Soil Movement, you can find all of these things on the Sudguru app. And if you're interested in learning more about the Safe Soil Movement, you can find this on ConsciousPlanet.org. Thank you all for being such wonderful participants. We will close with the invocation. You can hold Brahma Mudra. If you're, keeping, if you're wearing your glasses, keep them aside. Place your right hand over your left hand, loosely placed in the middle of your lap, and close your eyes. Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyote Gamaya Mrityurma Amritangamaya Aum Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you, uh, Isha Foundation, for that session of pranayama. I'm sure that we have all learned something that we can incorporate into our daily practice today. Before I announce uh, who we have up next, just a slight reminder that we have a digital exhibition starting tomorrow at the UN delegates entrance and you're all welcome to, to come and see it and enjoy it. It will offer a glimpse into the celebrations of the International Day of Yoga around the world and also present standardized set of practices called the Common Yoga Protocol. The Indian Mission will also be hosting a reception at the UN delegates entrance on 22nd June starting in the evening at 6.15 p.m. to introduce this yoga exhibition. And we invite all of you to kindly join us. So up next, we have Bhakti Center, a spiritual and cultural center in New York City that aims to share the experience of self-transformation through the culture and practices of bhakti yoga. Yoga guru Kishore Chandra from the center will be offering a guided session today, introducing the yoga asanas. Thank you all so much for being here. You all look so wonderful and beautiful. I am here accompanied by my dear Susan and my dear Jamuna Jaya, and we will be doing some yoga asana. So I was reflecting on this uh, 
yoga for humanity theme. It's such a beautiful theme. And when I think of yoga for humanity, I think of yoga for everyone, right? Yoga for everyone. Yoga that everyone should be able to do. And sometimes when we think of asan, we think of like handstands and all these crazy poses, touching your toe to your head and like this. And these are great, you know. Can you touch your toe to your head? <laughs> but some of us might not be able to do these poses. So I was really, really thinking yoga for all humanity, it should be simple, it should be accessible, it should be poses that we can all do and all feel good in. And I was thinking of this word simplicity or being simple. In uh, an ancient text, we are the Bhakti Center and we love to study uh, the Bhagavad Gita. And in this beautiful text, actually one of the qualities of someone who has divinity in their heart, who has uh, an enlightened mind, one of the qualities is simplicity, to be simple, right? To not be complicated. So today we will do simple poses that everyone can do and we'll take our time, yes? So can everyone please join me sitting up nice and tall? Get yourself nice and situated in a cross-legged seat. And you can close your eyes. You can have your hands on your thighs in Sukhasan. And just take a nice, big, deep inhale into your belly. Big, big, big inhale. And let something go. <sighs> Try that again. Really nice, big, deep inhale. And let something go. <sighs> One more because it feels so good. Really biggest, deepest inhale. And let something go out the mouth. <sighs> Beautiful. You can bring your hands to your heart center in this Anjali Mudra. And we will chant just one mantra before we begin. This is known as the Guru Mantra. And I want you with your eyes closed to bring to your mind um, a teacher. And this teacher can be a person, it can be a moment in your life, a book, something in nature, something that has taught you and led you to be here at this moment, in this beautiful yoga event. So bring that to mind as we chant this mantra. And you can just listen. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. And we'll all together chant the sound of Om, inhaling. Om. Let's do it twice more, inhaling. Om. One more time. your next inhale in a little bit deeper and let something go <sighs> so good everyone so we will begin in child's pose balasana so you can start at the front of your mat and just widen your knees and sit back as such yeah and you can take a look at jamuna jaya at susan so really really making sure that the butt is close to the heels, that the forehead is completely relaxed. You can take some breaths here into the upper back, into the spine, and just feel the earth beneath you. Just feel the grass beneath you, the beautiful breeze. And feel the forehead on the ground. So you might even start to massage the forehead from side to side. Massaging out the brow, 
we hold so much tension there actually in the forehead, in the mind, right? The mind gets really tricky. It's always tricking us. <laughs> so massage any tension, any stress that might be there. Hmm. Let's take one more nice inhale here in child's pose. And let something go. Hmm. We'll come back up onto all fours. So the hands are underneath the shoulders and the knees are underneath the hips, just like this. And then we'll inhale for cow pose. So the belly drops, the heart lifts, you look up to the sky, nice beautiful inhale. And on the exhale, we'll do cat pose. So push into the hands, curl the spine, drop the head. Let's do that two more times together. Inhaling, cow pose, opening up the heart, opening up. And exhale, push into the hands, curling the spine for cat. One more time all together. Inhale, opening up, feeling the shoulders, the heart, the neck open. And exhale, push into your hands. Good, and come back to normal. And then these next couple of cat cows, I want you to do kind of on your own. So you can keep on going forward and back a few times, but you can also move around. I kind of want you to get a little personal, get into your body and see how it feels. And be playful because yoga is meant to bring joy. Yoga is meant to bring happiness and peace. So. Really start to explore your body, right? Maybe the hips go to the side. Maybe the neck is getting involved. You can take a look at Jamuna Jaya. She's getting really creative. <laughs> and so is Susan. Beautiful, everyone. So good. Yes, yes, yes. It looks so great. Okay. And then let's pause here in tabletop. So let's rearrange ourselves. Hands under shoulders and knees under hips. We're going to send our left toes mm, back. And we're going to start to shift the weight forward and back, just opening the toes, opening the ankle, nice and simple. And then pay attention here. My right shin is going to kick stand behind me. My left foot comes down. My left arm comes up. We're in side plank variation, vashistasana. And take big, beautiful, yummy breaths here. You should feel the whole left side of your body opening. Really reach those fingertips up to the sky. It should feel so good. And if you would like to take it a little further, you can reach the left arm over the head to the stage, right? Like a big, big side bend, if you would like. Hmm, should feel so, so nice. Good. One more nice inhale here. And exhale, slowly come out of it, back to where you began. Hands down, knees down. We're back in tabletop position. Good, everyone. We'll do the other side, yes? Right toes are back, and you can shift the weight forward and back just a few times. And then as you're ready, the left shin will kick stand. The right foot is down. The right arm is up. We're in that beautiful Vashistasana variation pose, and it should feel so good. Good, beautiful. And if you would like, you can reach the arm over the head. So nice. Yes. Good. Take one more big inhale here. And exhale. Slowly come back to where you began. All fours, all fours. Take your time. Here we are. Good. So we'll do a pose. It's a nice pose called puppy dog pose. So it's different than child's pose. My knees and my hips will stay aligned. And I'm just going to walk my arms forward. And I'm going to bring my chest down to the ground. And a simple version of this is just having the forehead on the ground. That'll be a lot softer. If you're wanting a deeper version, you can have the chin on the ground. Yes? And that will help open up the upper spine a little bit more. But do what's comfortable. Do what feels good, right? Don't push yourself. Remember, our theme is simplicity. So here, take deep breaths. Deep, deep, deep breaths. Breathing into the shoulders. Breathing into the upper back. So good, everyone. Okay. And then from here, we're going to stay nice and close to the ground. I want you to look forward in between your hands. And then I want you to start to slowly send the body forward 
and slowly the belly comes down to the mat, and we're here on our forearms for Sphinx pose. So my elbows are underneath my shoulders, yes? And I'm reaching my chest forward, uh -huh, and I'm rolling the shoulders back. Good, stay in this pose. You can take a look at Jamuna. Her shoulders are rolling back. She's reaching her chest over towards Susan. It looks so beautiful. Think broad shoulders, broad collarbones. Take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, make a little pillow for your forehead and just be here. And it should feel really nice. And you might shake the hips from side to side. Mm, so good, everyone. Great. From here, let's bring the hands underneath the shoulders, elbows back, shoulders back, and we're going to take baby cobra bhujangasana a few times. So lift up the heart, open the heart, inhale, very little weight in the hands, and on the exhale, just tap the forehead down. We'll do two more. Nice inhale lifts you up. Exhale, tap the forehead down. And one more time like that. Inhale, elbows back, shoulders back, heart forward. And exhale, taps the forehead down. Great. Push your hands into the ground and come back onto your hands and knees. And we are going to step our feet back into plank. Yes, just for a moment, not too long. And then bend your knees and lift your butt up into the air for downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And it's the first downward facing dog, I think, maybe of your day. So walk your downward facing dog out. Really pedal your feet. Really get creative. You can really explore in your body how this downward dog Feel so good, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Walk those legs out. I love it over there. It looks so good. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And then let's find some stillness in this downward facing dog and push into the hands and lift the sit bones up into the air and really breathe here. Feel connected to the earth. Hmm. Good. We'll add some movement here to the downward facing dog and we're going to match the movement with the breath. So we're going to come forward to plank, shoulders over wrists, inhale. And on the exhale, downward facing dog. Let's do that two more times. Inhale nice and long for plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Let's do it one more time. Nice big inhale for plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful, everyone. From here, we're going to slowly, step by step, walk our feet to the top of the mat. Take your time. Feel each step. Ah, and when you get there, measure two fists between your feet and then hands in front of you and bow the head. Hmm and release, bend your knees so that your belly is touching your thighs. You can shift the weight a little forward and back, heels of the feet and balls of the feet. You can shake the head yes, and you can shake the head no. You can grab opposite elbows and you can sway a little bit from side to side. So good. Let go of the elbows, bend your knees, and really slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, start to come up to stand, taking your time, letting the head be the last thing to lift up. So good, everyone. Okay, we're going to do something together. Reach your arms up. Nice big inhale. We're going to cactus the arms and let something go out of the mouth like this. <sighs> Yes, let's do that again. Big inhale. Let something go nice and loud. <sighs> we'll do it one more time, okay? Nice big inhale. And let something go. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay, this time we're going to reach up and we're going to grab our right wrist, our right wrist, yes? And we're going to inhale, lift up, up, up. And we're going to take the side bend this way over to the 
East River, I think that is, right? Yes. <laughs> and breathe into your right side body. It should feel so good. Big breaths here. Hmm. One more nice big inhale. And on the exhale, come back up through center, switch, right? So now grab your left wrist, inhale nice and up, and then take it over to the side and breathe. Now we're in the direction of the Hudson River. <laughs> Good. Breathe into that side body. One more big inhale. And on the exhale, slowly come up. Exhale, prayers to your heart. And then slowly, arms down, chin down, bend your knees. And we're coming right back down, folks. Slowly back down to Uttanasana, forward fold. And release here. Let yourself be here. So from here, we are going to step our left foot back into a lunge, yes? So we're in this nice lunge, just like that. My right arm is going to twist up into the air, and it should feel so good. And then stay with me here. I'm going to reach my right arm over my head. I'm going to look down. I'm going to walk my hands to the wide side of the mat and parallel my feet for wide straddle prasarita padottanasana. And just bow down here with wide legs, yes? Let the head go. Let your legs be long. Let yourself be here. Hmm. And then we are going to kind of half lift on our fingertips. And I want you to point your toes out. And we're going to have a little bit of fun here, OK? We're still in this wide straddle. I want you to explore. Bend one knee. Bend another knee. See what it's like. Explore your own body. Explore your practice. Maybe you'll hear like little cricks and cracks in the hips and in the knees. <laughs> Susan's knee just cracked. <laughs> so just explore your body and notice how it feels. Good, 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 good. We'll come back through center, half lift, inhale. And we'll walk to the top of the mat. Stay here, framing the right foot. Drop your left knee. You can untuck the toe and then reach the arms forward and up for Anjaneyasana, crescent lunge, and breathe. And stay. And feel the beautiful air coming into your lungs. Look up at the beautiful sky. It's such a wonderful day. One more big inhale here. And on the exhale, hands come down to frame your right foot. Tuck your back toe, lift the knee, step forward, half lift, inhale, and exhale, fold. We will do the other side now. So now we're going to step our right leg back, yes? And then we're going to twist the left arm up into the air. So good, everyone. So it's exactly the same as the other side. We're going to reach the arm over the head and walk our hands to the wide side of the mat in wide straddle, right? Yes, exactly. Beautiful, everyone. So we're in wide straddle. We're releasing the head down. Ah, it should feel very nice. And then same thing as the other side. You can point the toes out, and you can explore, right? You can bend the knee. You can bend another knee. You can explore your body and see how it feels. And remember that whatever you're doing is right, yes? Because this is an exploration. So don't look at anyone else. Just explore your body. See how it feels. Good. And then we'll come back up through center. Nice big inhale. And we'll walk back up to the top of the mat to frame the left foot. Drop your back knee, reach the arms forward and up for Anjaneyasana, crescent lunge, should feel so good. Look up at the beautiful sky and stay. One nice big inhale and stay. And one last one, big inhale and exhale, hands are down to the ground. Tuck your back toe, step your right foot to the top of the mat and bow down. Good. From here, we're going to bend our knees and slowly roll our way back up to the top of the mat. So nice, everyone. So now we'll get into a little bit of a heated pose, fierce pose. Bring your feet together. Reach the arms up. Inhale. Utkatasana, chair pose. Sit back. For all of those of you that do yoga, it's a love-hate relationship with this pose, right? We love it so much. Sit down a little bit deeper. 
<laughs> Take one more nice big inhale. And we're going to twist over to the right. So the left elbow goes to the outside of the right knee. Prayer is at the heart center. And twist. And breathe. And look up to the sky. Mm. You can feel the heat, right? Maybe there's a little sweat. This is good. Okay, come back through center. We're still in chair pose. I know it's a little hard. Inhale and twist the other direction. Oh, yes. And breathe here. Good. Make sure to keep breathing the whole time. Great, and then come back up through center. Stand up, inhale. Arms alongside you, Tadasana. Widen your feet just a tiny bit, hips width distance. We're going to do a fun standing breathing pose that hopefully will get some energy moving and it's nice and cooling. It's called Breath of Joy. It's really sweet, so we'll open up the arms, inhale. And on the exhale, we're going to give ourselves a hug as we bend the knees. <laughs> inhale up. Exhale. <laughs> inhale up. Exhale. And you can go at your own pace, inhaling and exhaling, right? We're just doing this a few times, and I really want you to feel that beautiful heart opening into the sky and just feeling yourself in the yoga. Let's do it three more times, yes? Last one. Big, big, big inhale. And exhale. This time, stay down, curl down, hands down. We are in forward fold, and we've arrived at our last pose. So heel toe the feet a little bit wider. Point the toes out. Sit your butt back. We are in malasana, garland pose, yes? So elbows out into the inside of the thighs. Lift the chest up to the heart. And breathe. And feel the breath coming in and out, right? It might be a little strong after we did that breath of joy. So keep lifting the chest up to the thumbs. And we'll take one final twist here. So the right hand comes out like this. The left arm is going to lift up into the twist. Stay for one exhale. One more nice inhale here. And exhale, come through center. Prayer is at the heart. We'll do the other side. Left fingertips down to the ground. Right arm lifts up. Inhale. Stay for the exhale. One more inhale. And exhale, prayer is to the heart. Okay, we're going to have a very graceful moment. As graceful as you can, we are going to boop, just sit on your butt. <laughs> and we're going to meet back in our sukhasana or our cross-legged pose. Sit up nice and tall. Close the eyes. Notice how the movement changed you. Notice what has shifted. Notice what is different. Maybe you feel a little warmer. Take a nice, big, deep inhale through the nose. Let something go out the mouth. <sighs> Bring a prayer to your heart center. And we'll close with just one sound of OM, inhaling. Thank you all so much for your beautiful movement and your beautiful practice. Thank you, Susan, and thank you, Jamuna Jaya. Once again, my name is Kishor Chandra. We are from the Bhakti Center. We're just down First Avenue on First and First, so please come visit us and come do yoga with us. Thank you all so much, and have a beautiful rest of your day. We thank uh, Guru Kishor Chandra and his team for leading us through that demonstration of uh, yoga asanas. And it was wonderful to see all of you so involved in it. I hope warmed up yet. OK, excellent. For our final session of the evening, allow me to introduce Ms. Kali Morse from the Integral Yoga Institute, which is one of the oldest yoga institutions in New York.
Ms. Morse has been imparting Hatha Yoga training for more than two decades and will guide us through a meditation session as we close the day. Feels like it's off to the side a little bit, but okay. Yes. Be fine. Okay. okay. Thank you. Namaste. Such an honor to be here this evening to guide you in a brief meditation. Uh, we're fortunate to have been practicing, you're fortunate to have been practicing some asana before meditation and also uh, pranayama, some pranayama, nadi shuddhi which are wonderful ways to uh, prepare yourself for meditation. So meditation is often called or said to be like a pilgrimage to the center of our being, which is wisdom, wisdom defined as kindness, love, empathy, and of course, peace. So hopefully as we take this little journey to meditate this evening, you'll be able to touch that space within you and feel the connection with all of these wonderful practitioners here this evening. Okay, great. So f the posture in meditation is very important. So most of you are sitting cross-legged, but there is the option to kneel as well in a pose called Vajrasana. Or if you're sitting on a chair, placing the feet flat on the ground rather than crossing them. And of course, people can sit in a chair cross-legged as well. So the spine is lengthened, the chest is expanded, the hands resting gently on your legs. And then close the eyelids and maybe a slight smile, a soft smile on the lips. So offer yourself now a scan of your body. Starting at your feet, relax your feet and legs, your hands and your arms. Relax your hips, your back and chest and the shoulders. You might notice areas of tension, so send a message to that part of the body that may be feeling tense. Maybe adjust your posture to feel a little more comfortable. So take some time now to scan your body. And now bring your awareness to the breath. And we'll practice some deep breathing so as you breathe in, feel the belly move forward, the rib cage expand, the chest expand and lift. And then as you exhale, the chest relaxes, rib cage relaxes, belly relaxes and pulls in slightly to complete your exhalation. Now continue this deep breathing through three parts, but let those parts blend. So there's a beautiful flow to your breath. So you're, as you participate, as you practice deep breathing, you're actually calming the nervous system, another wonderful preparation for silence. The 
the energy of breath is the energy of presence, of being present where you are right now. On the next exhale, return your breath to its natural rhythm, more delicate, more soft and subtle. So you may notice as you sit and breathe softly that the mind wanders, ruminating perhaps on the past, the future, daydreams, memories. This is the mind's job. It likes to distract you from the present moment. So when that happens, just bring your breath back, your, excuse me, bring your attention back to the breath. The breath is anchoring you in the present moment. Feel the energy of all the people that surround you, knowing that that inner light that wisdom within is present in every being. And the practice of meditation brings us into that still point within. The mind will wander, as I say, it's the mind's job to wander. Sometimes it's helpful to add some words to your breath, like the mantra, Om Shanti, inhaling on the Om and exhaling on the Shanti. Om Shanti. Or simply saying, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out, in, out. Continue to be aware of your body. You're going inward, but the body is still to help you find the stillness within. You might notice the feel, the feel of a light breeze on your skin. It is said that when many people are, are meditating together, it creates a very great and wonderful force field of energy, the energy of peace. Sometimes visual, visualization is helpful to keep the mind centered. For example, clouds drifting in a summer sky, passing across the backdrop of the sky and disappearing, or dry leaves floating on the surface of a stream and floating away. 
the thoughts disappearing so the mind can feel serene and peaceful. Release your attention, open your eyes, maybe stretch out your body a little bit and notice how you feel. So I think meditation practice is crucial in sending peace out to the entire universe, to our world. Every day, see if you can sit maybe 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. And simply watch your breath, add a mantra. I'm sure many of you already have a meditation practice, but certainly in my life, meditation has been a, a boon. I, it's like brushing my teeth every day is meditating. So I thank you all so much for meditating with me to sit here and feel the energy of your silence was very powerful. So I humbly ask you to continue to meditate so that we can change the world to a more peaceful place for our children and their children. Om Shanti. We appreciate Integral Yoga Institute for helping us close this commemoration on such a calming note. We would like to thank all of you for attending today's event, for participating so enthusiastically throughout this last hour. The UN Secretariat for collaborating with us on this. President of the General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Abdullah Shahid. Permanent representative of Bhutan, Ambassador Doma Shering, for sharing your thoughts. The Indian Council for Cultural Relations. And a big thank you to the State Bank of India, India's premium bank, for partnering with us. And to all of you watching online uh, for joining us today and hopefully for following the practices today, thank you so much. We would again once, uh, once more remind you that we have a digital exhibition starting tomorrow through to 1st of July. And also we would be having a reception at the UN delegates entrance at 6.15 on the 22nd of this month. So that's another thing to pencil in your calendars. We really hope to see you all there. And please remember to collect your refreshments as you leave the venue today. Thank you again so much for being part of this. It's amazing to feel this energy. Good night and namaste. <laughs>